Good morning guys, it is already day 11 of our adventure flying the Sling High Wing from the Netherlands all the way down to South Africa. Yesterday morning we arrived here in Lokichogyo in the northern part of Kenya after departing Khartoum, Sudan at around 5 a.m. in the morning. That was a fantastic flight over South Sudan. We were super impressed by the views of the marshland and we were also very happy to arrive here on time before the storm build up over southern Sudan. So we are just waiting for our visas. We had a slight problem with that yesterday. Trying to sort that out before heading southbound to Samburu. In Samburu we'll be visiting Save the Elephants to see what amazing conservation work they do and to see how they incorporate aviation in protecting these beautiful wild animals. The plane is still here, luckily. Gonna pack up all our stuff and try to head out here before it gets super hot. We said our goodbyes to Washington, who's arguably the most famous guy in Loki as he's the go-to handler for all ferry pilots that come through this now desolated airfield. Loki Chogyo used to be the main hub for the UN during their humanitarian aid efforts in South Sudan in the early 2000s. The airfield was home to caravans, King Airs and Hercules aircraft flying in hourly. Now, next to the aircraft wrecks, it is only Washington dealing with the occasional ferry pilots coming through. Waving the abandoned planes goodbye, we made a slight detour taking us past Lake Turkana which is the fourth largest salt lake in the world. It is home to over 100 bird and fish species, among which groups of flamingos that we could spot from above. I didn't catch much of the stunning views as I was taking a well-needed nap before approaching Samburu. We are about 30 nautical miles northwest inbound to Buffalo Springs in Samburu. And we are on the descent now from flight level 0905. We've spoken to Paul, who is the pilot at Save the Elephants, and he is ready and waiting for us to land. So we're going to fly overhead, see where the wind is coming from, and hopefully we'll see some elephants on our descent. Samburu traffic, Zulina from Sierra Tel Whiskey, Western Beam, Samburu Oryx, routing to Buffalo Springs, uh, 4,700 feet on a descent, estimated over Buffalo Springs in two minutes. Traffic to Lena from Sierra Tel Whiskey, turning final uh, runway 124, Buffalo Springs. We just landed at Buffalo Springs airstrip and met with Paul. So what's our plan for the next day or two? So tomorrow morning we're gonna fly to the east, follow the river Ewasonyiro and th this is an area we believe elephants normally go but we haven't uh, flown there yet. So I was thinking tomorrow morning we fly with you and see if really elephants go that far. What we normally do mostly is uh, wildlife tracking and we follow the elephants uh, that are collared and we follow them to all the places they go and uh, the kind of flying we do just low flying at 300 feet. It's fun, I fly the 185, the 206, soon I'll start flying the savannah and I've been flying the super cab as well. After listening in amazement to Paul's exciting aviation career, we unpacked the plane and tied it down in the new hangar before heading to the research camp. There's something truly captivating about being in the bush, feeling the dusty afternoon heat on your skin and knowing you're miles away from the life you live at home. Uh, switching cars because the road stops here. We made it to the research rest camp and already met some amazing researchers and rangers here and have spotted our first elephant, a huge one back there. And it really feels like we are stepping into a totally different world and it's incredible that we get to experience this and head out on some flying missions with them. So I think what we're going to do is charge some batteries, get some tea and then head out on our first tracking experience. We are out in the Samburu National Reserve. That's pretty much what we do every day. We conduct 
research and collect data on elephant behavior, and demography, population dynamics. To do that, we identify elephants. We identified about 1,200 since the Save the Elephant study in Sambura started in 1997. We pretty much have more than 20 years of data on relatedness and friendship between different elephant families. So it's a huge opportunity to look at how the environment, but also how humans affect elephant behavior and elephant populations in the wild. In addition to this, what we do is studying elephant movements, which is about not just knowing where the elephants go, but also knowing which kind of resources they need and which kind of areas they need to be protected in order to safeguard those resources for elephants. Human population in Africa is growing, development is growing, and it's important not to end up in a situation where there's only small pockets of habitat for elephants left. Let's say after 2012, there's a downward trend in the, in the rate of poaching. And with decline in, in poaching, what we've seen in Kenya is an expansion in elephant populations, also outside of protected areas, into ranges where elephants have not been in a very long time. There's issues of conflict, so elephants coming into villages, elephant breaking water tanks, and don't make elephants very popular with the local community. This has been exacerbated in the last couple of years by the persisting drought in northern Kenya, so water is less and less available, grazing is less and less available because of no rains and because of increasing livestock numbers. That trend is quite worrying and it's, uh, it's more difficult to deal with human-elephant conflict than it is to deal with ivory poaching. Of course, the last thing we do to save the elephants is try and promote human-elephant coexistence. We put together this amazing toolbox, which is basically a summary and with guidelines on how to live with elephants, how to behave around elephants, but also how to deter elephants from certain areas. We've been testing beehive fences and a lot of other non-lethal deterrents and a lot of other techniques and methodologies to ensure coexistence. So the toolbox is a huge pool of knowledge that we're making available to the rest of the conservation community. And I think you want to look behind you because there's an element right here. Oh, there comes a little poop. <laughs> I was about to say that I'm ready to go track some elephants by plane, but we really don't have to go very far. So I think it might be best to backtrack here a little bit and then do a rolling takeoff. She wants to fly. It's beautiful. Today, uh, the flight that we're gonna do is to the north, uh, north, northeast. We're gonna fly to this region, check on these two elephants here, and then uh, do a flight over these two females here. These are a valley there. So this, this is a dry river that cuts across two mount ranges. And yeah, this one says 15 kilometers. 15 kilometers, okay. This application here, wild track, we just say, if you want to go to Rathi, you tap on Rathi and there's an icon, the info icon, it gives you the, the estimated time of arrival to that particular elephant. So this uh, is what we rely mostly when you are following these elephants. During the dry season, what happens is the elephants are in large groups normally split so that uh, they can have enough food at different places instead of going as a group of 100 elephants. Then they come back together afterwards. Yeah, yeah they do. Okay, so this actually is supposed to be green now. Yep. But because of the drought, it's all... Yeah, it's all grey now. Elephants there. Oh wow, amazing. <laughs> amazing. I'll just take the bear point. Oh, they even disappear. I'm glad we saw them, but just weren't able to count them. Yeah. Well, at least I have two, so... Good. Well, first sighting, at least. Yeah. Along the, the river here, we'll just might see elephants. So should I fly over the be the bed or? Yes, over the bed. You know, having a plane like this for this kind of walk is so amazing. Okay, I'm gonna climb a little bit higher because I'm right in the turbulence here. Sorry. <laughs> right. 
So we're still looking for Jessica? Uh, yeah, as we just go to the river and now we float just down. Alright. The elephant's here. Down there. Uh, just continue to uh, It's quite easy to lose an elephant. I count to 22. 22? Yeah. They're going to the river to drink. Such a big group. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna head back? Yep. That was a beautiful last turn. So we're on a long final. Planes are all masked around. Fuel pumps are on. Feet pump is on. Everything's good. Well, our landing lights on. We just made it back to the rest camp and had a freaking beautiful flight. Uh, I'm actually super tired. It was lots of work maneuvering the plane, but we saw so many elephants. And uh, I'm preparing myself a hot shower before we head out for some dinner with the rest of the crew that work here. And then off to bed early because tomorrow morning we're up at sunrise for another patrol flight. This is Maurice's first ever bucket shower. What's your experience? Uh. Refreshing in the cold breeze. What are you doing? <laughs> not funny. No, that's not funny. <laughs> I'm not just black one here. We are going to head out for another patrolling flight, this time early morning, to see if we can see some more elephants, specifically by the watering holes and by the river. So it's looking pretty stunning out. Morning, morning! Morning! Maudis is just adding another 30 liters of fuel, so we have enough for our flight, plus reserves, and we'll be the four of us today, as we've been joined by another researcher who's going to help us spot the elephants. So we're going to actually head out further towards a swamp area and hope to see lots of elephants there. And look behind me at this hilarious little sign. If everyone's happy, we can okay. taxi out. Off we go. So we're going to the swamp? Yep. Place that uh, none of us uh, has been there. So it's the first time you guys first are going to go there? Yep, first time, yeah. And there's an idea, you guys see on the map that there are a few elephants there? Yeah, well, one elephant that, that we've collared has gone a bit uh, far to the east. So we think maybe there could be more elephants to towards the east. And now these are the elephant tracks. You see this, these things here. Oh yeah, really? Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Oh, there's an elephant in the river. You see it? Just in the bend. Uh, there's an elephant. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me slow down a little. That's a family. The oh wow, amazing, yeah, up there. So it's, it's one of the families that we've we called Aden. Aden? Yeah, Aden. I think there's oh, some yeah, more yeah, animals see, there. That might be buffalo. Yeah, buffaloes. Yeah, it's buffaloes? It's sporting. <laughs> My eyes are like eagle eyes. <laughs> yeah, that's what we need. It's a... Kind of like. I think that's a benefit of growing up in East Africa and uh, growing up with going on safari, yeah. you become very good at spotting animals. Yeah, elephant stuff. Where? See, you see those grey things. Yeah. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, just there. Try and see if we can spot a cola. This one's here. Oh, is that a small one? Yeah, there are three of them. Yeah. Oh, more elephants here on the left. You see them? It's three of them. Okay, let's see if we can see a cola. Yes, right. Let's fly there and see if we can spot some. Oh, there are more there actually, the, the big group, like 20. Oh, yeah. So there's on the right and then there's here. Yeah, right. So here right. and there's one more back there. So right. three, four, and then this side. Let's look for a cola here. Oh my goodness, so beautiful. And let's just continue with the. Oh, more there. <laughs> So yeah, the, the kind of TV that is happening here, you see, the planting corn, and that really causes the human elephant conflict. To plant corn, you fence that area, it's the most green place uh, compared to the other place. They want something to eat, so then, unfortunately, during the conflict, they shoot these elephants. Not for ivory, but... You were saying that the n numbers of poached elephants has reduced significantly, and now yep. the human elephant conflict is the biggest right, problem. Yeah, yeah. A lot of livestock here to the left of us. Yeah. The camels. To the right. 
Yeah, elephant's there. <laughs> yeah. Am I continuing this heading? Yes, continue that heading. Yes. Oh yeah, I see them. They're right below us. Yes. Wow. Let's see if we can spot oh, a cola right. there. A uh, cola, cola. Oh, on our left, on our left. Oh, here. Oh, you see them there? There are lots. Incredible. Okay. Massive agricultural land. Ah, I believe the elephants are in this area. There's so much livestock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this kind of livestock very bad for this ecosystem? It is, because they are over grazing them. They don't need this many animals, right? They don't, but for the culture, it's a sense of pride. Yeah, so I mean, like, your wealth is yeah. dependent on... Yeah. So, if you tell them to sell these uh, uh, livestock, they'll be so shocked how it is, you're telling them. The strip is there? Yep, that's the strip, yep. Well, that was a successful morning. Yeah, sure. Paul, how was the flight? Awesome. Explored a place that we've never been before. <laughs> How did you like the sling? Ah, it's an amazing aircraft actually. Uh, if I would advise somebody to, uh, to get a plane like this for the kind of uh, work we do, definitely a sling for it. In this flight, we really got to demonstrate the slow flying capabilities of the high wing and SHW performed beautifully. I took the power back to between 50 and 60%, brought the flaps down for one notch, and we could really slowly, easily circle the targets. And then on the flights between the two sites, we could speed up to about 120 knots, which again demonstrated the wide range of capabilities of this aircraft. So I loved this flight. I'm so grateful that we got this opportunity and learned a lot from Paul. Honestly, I envy his job so much because slow and low flying is definitely my favorite. So I'm really grateful for this opportunity. It's so special that we got to lend a helping hand in the beautiful work they do here. And I'll never forget this experience. It was uh, really, really beautiful. So I think we're gonna park the plane and then head back to camp for breakfast. We're gonna end the video off here. But if you wanna find out more information about the work that this organization does, please check out savetheelephants.org and learn how you can support this beautiful wildlife initiative. Tomorrow morning we're gonna head south to Nairobi, the capital of Kenya, so be sure to stick around for the next video where we explore that vibrant city.